one of the co-founders of uh, Skytrax Inc. We're located uh, in Newcastle, Delaware. We're a small uh, technology company, investor-funded uh, big plans for, uh, for large growth. One of the common uh, themes that uh, I'm going to continue on, um, our company was founded uh, by three ex-Duponters. Um, and uh, uh, we were kind of serial entrepreneurs anyway. But, uh, we got an idea from, as all good ideas come from a, a customer who came to us with a problem that they couldn't solve. It was a problem that we were well aware of from working in the supply chain technology at, uh, at DuPont. Um, and it basically has to do with you know, tracking inventory inside large uh, warehouses. And uh, we uh, came up with uh, a product that we recently uh, just received a full US patent on in December of 2010. And uh, I'll, I'll tell you, in a non-technical way, it's an indoor GPS system. Uh, allows you to track vehicles indoors to an accuracy of a couple inches anywhere in any side building. And people say GPS indoors. <laughs> it's a really very big market for that. Well, our uh, our market is uh, four trucks um, and uh, materials handling vehicles. So uh, anywhere you have fleets of materials handling vehicles, four trucks operating the supply chain is the market for us. We thought in the very beginning that it was an international market. Uh, we did our market research just based on uh, four truck sales. Uh, North America is only about 30% of the worldwide sales of four trucks. Europe was clearly the epicenter. Uh, you know, they're already at 40% growing area in Southeast Asia. So our business plan from the very beginning was uh, to be an international company, although we expected to you know, cut our teeth here first in North America, get our legs under us. Um, as fate would have it, of course, I mean, our second uh, uh, inquiry for sale came from New Zealand. And um, it came from a, a company that wanted to partner with us to deliver our technology into, uh, into New Zealand. They were competing against some very large companies, uh, including IBM, for a, for a good sale. And they thought this new technology might actually uh, be the competitive uh, advantage that they needed. We were very uh, polite, said we're just you know, we're just getting started. Uh, this was early 2007. We had just come into the market at that point uh, with our first product. Uh, but they were very persistent, and every every objection we threw up about, you know, the distances and support, and, you know, they were they were just relentless. Uh, so they wore us down to the point where um, uh, we agreed to uh, let them take our technology to New Zealand. Long story short, very successful. Um, installation, one of our uh, case studies, uh, an application that's been expanded upon every year uh, since it was installed and is one of our case studies now that we use in, uh, in market. <coughs> we got that first sale from the internet. Um, uh, and if you're a technology company, I guess most any company now, you know, you, you put up a, a website, but certainly it's a technology company. We have uh, a very good uh, uh, young woman who's our vice president of marketing, very savvy with the uh, uh, social media. Um, and you know, we were on the internet right away before we had any sales at all. Um, and if you're on the internet and you really have a product or service that, where the value proposition you know, really is, it crosses international boundaries, which ours does, um, they, you know, it is one of those things where you build it and they will find you. Uh, and that's what happened to us. Um, I'll just say, uh, as, a, as a short story, um, our expectation of our company is that uh, over the long term, and, and to technology startups long term means the next three to five years, um, you know, we expect uh, most of our business to be uh, export business. Um, we expect to have a very strong North American business as well, but certainly well over half of our revenues are uh, expected to come from foreign sources. We work through uh, sales channels, so we're not selling directly to end customers anywhere except in the United States. So our job is to develop uh, uh, channels for sales and support and installation of our product throughout the world. And we've gotten uh, you know, a huge amount of help through uh, both the XM Bank through uh, commercial service. In doing this, we can talk a little bit more about that uh, uh, later on. Um, but I think the, the, the main thing that we found is that there are tremendous uh, resources out there. As Stephen mentioned, um, it's just a matter of going out and taking advantage of uh, 
both the, the uh, national resources that are available to you uh, and also the state resources. Uh, we've used many of the resources that I've seen listed here today on slides, including SCORE, SDDC, uh, Commercial Service, XM Bank. Um, the local banks have been very helpful. Um, the international shipping companies have been very helpful to us uh, you know, as well in helping us understand the paperwork and, uh, and other issues related to you know, shipping uh, products. So um, I would say you know, we are right now, we have products installed in um, Australia, New Zealand, Sweden, Germany, England, Spain, um, as well as North America. And we've got sales activities going on in the Middle East, in Africa, and in South America. So, uh, and we're still a very relatively small company. We're only about 22 people here in Newcastle, Delaware. Uh, but I will tell you that the support that we feel that we have for, you know, exporting is sufficient that we can kind of uh, go out there without any fear, um, you, know, that, you know, any market that makes sense, uh, that we're going to get good advice from the support folks uh, that are here in the room today, and, um, you know, we can just concentrate on running the business. My name is Bill Wallach, uh, president of ILC Dover. Um, our company uh, is, is larger than the other companies you've heard of today, but we still consider ourselves to 